you had said, Nicole, that you didn't hear any red flags. However, from the beginning, or you can tell me when he said this, that he was focused on his career and did not, it was not looking for a serious relationship. He honestly said that from the onset. Mm-hmm. And I was okay with that. I think I'm at a point in my life, having been single and not committed to anyone for a number of years, that I am, for the most part, okay with seeing how things might play out. And the idea of dating again and being interested, really interested in someone, having someone really interested in me is exciting. And long term, I'm not even certain of what I want. I think that sometimes when you've been single for a long time, you get a little set in your ways. And when you have your self-career and family, um, getting back into dating and, and perhaps long-term relationships, it, 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 it takes a lot of soul searching, or it should. Um, I, I, I was okay with that. Perhaps a little disappointed, because that's not necessarily what one wants to hear, but I, I was okay with being respectful of his boundary. Okay. So if I were to say to you, you could have a relationship with him that would be not committed and you could have a sexual relationship with him that would not be committed. On that scale, 10 being, yeah, absolutely, and one being not at all, where are you? I would say perhaps a five. Okay, and what makes you know that you're at a five with that? I think that historically, um, in dating, I have gravitated towards often the unattainable, and so that's probably part of my pattern. And um, I am not a serial dater. I don't like to date multiple people at once. It takes a lot of um, energy, mental energy. And um, But I think that in- inherently I somewhere deep down hope that perhaps things will change or that person will change their mind about how they feel. Yes. And that is very female. It's generally what females feel. Maybe a bit of difference on the scale of, you know, liking the unattainable, so to speak. But generally it is that we like to be desired, wanted, and then once we get into things, we bond through time and sex. And it is just a natural, normative, female thing for us to want a relationship from that bonding. So it's a slippery slope in a way because We can go into it with the excitement and then we know as females that that excitement will morph into wanting a relationship. Normally, that's how it works. Would you say that's a fair statement about you? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So what I mean by that is that if you uh, were to find that you continue to like him the way that you do, and it progresses, and you have sex, that you will get more into it, not less. Agreed. I absolutely agree with that statement. Okay. So it takes a bit of reframing and rethinking then and being very intentional about this. Because if not, you have the chance of being hurt. Yes. And with each relationship... We as females are the connectors of the world and our hearts can get hurt and broken by 
these types of relationships that have little chance to go the distance, right? Yes. And here's the thing. It going the distance has nothing to do with how the man might feel about you. Interesting. So I don't know if you've had a chance to read my book. I have, yes. So this is the puppy principle at work. Absolutely. Yes, it is. Because we can love all puppies and we can want to play with them and be with them. We get a fantastic feeling and we absolutely can love a puppy and not be in any place to adopt it. And that is the criteria that we have to look at for a man to be in a place of having a committed relationship. What I mean by that is that no matter how much you love a puppy, if you are solely focused on your career, that will impact your ability to adopt. This is a simplistic way of relating it to females, but it is profound in its simplicity because men are simple in that way. You're a pretty puppy to him, and he may absolutely want to play with you, and he can absolutely fall in love with you by playing with you, but it will have no bearing on whether or not he can adopt, meaning commit, in exactly the same way that you can love a puppy, but not in any way be able or willing to or ready to adopt. And it's as simple as that. And this is why I say, when any man says, I'm not looking for a relationship, that is you saying, no way, no how, no matter how much I love a puppy, will I adopt at this time? Because I'm focused on my career. Because I, whatever it is, I don't have my um, uh, home or apartment or the environment to adopt. I'm too focused on um, losing 20 pounds. And that's my goal now, working out and doing that. In other words, it can be a combination of things, but even a, an advocation can preclude your adopting. Because as you know, and everyone knows, no matter how much we love a pretty puppy, it's going to take our time and attention in a way that will preclude other things. We have to make choices. We are going to be responsible not only for the puppy, but to it. Coming home after work and focusing on giving it attention and walks and feeding it and whatever. It is the same for the man. And because a man loves all of us as the pretty puppies we are, One is small, like the little chihuahua. Another is like the mastiff. Another is red, and the other is uh, beige, and the other is white, and the other is black, and they love us all. One thing about the other is just as cute, just like with us. Whether it's the the pushed-in face little pug, or that regal royal poodle. They're all cute and wonderful. We can love them all in the moment. We must be at a place to adopt. So this is what's at play for him right now. That definitely makes sense. And as I was reading that chapter in the book, it resonated from conversations he and I have had. Him becoming more established in his career and his different ventures. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't 
make it impossible, but it does make it improbable. Hmm. And here's what I mean by that. We know that love alone can make us adopt, but it's improbable. In other words, um, and I use myself with this because I'm an absolute puppy lover, doggy lover. And because of my new marriage, my business, my travel, this and that, I've not adopted. I think about it every day almost because I'm missing having a, a pet and particularly a doggy in my life. I miss it. So I get my fixes, uh, for example, with my, my sister's doggies, but they live far. I get my fix by going online and looking at cute puppy videos. It's not the same. I get my fix by walking on the streets of, of New York City and uh, my other home. I go to it and I, when I'm walking along, you know, they're little doggies. Now, unfortunately, you can't go up to them and pet them during COVID, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not ready. No matter how much I want it. So here's the deal. If the neighbor who's walking along with their cute puppy, said to me, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going out of town for a couple of weeks. You know, would you like to take Sparky? I'd be like, yeah. Yeah. It'll be fun. Let me test it out, too. This doggy's already housebroken. Everything's fine. Let me see how that goes. Maybe that'll push me a little towards adopting. Regardless, I'll feel wonderful having Sparky for a few weeks to love on. I'll bring him into my home, give him a bath, sleep with him, cuddle on him, kiss him, love him up. It'll fill me up. And after the two weeks, he goes back to the neighbor and she says, hey, whenever you'd like, come and take Sparky. You can even spend the night. Really? I could? Yeah, wonderful. Spend the weekend. Okay, great. Let me know if you're ever going out of town. I would love it. That could fill me up for a while, right, without ever thinking about adopting. I don't have the responsibility to it or for it. It's as simple as that for the man because you're a pretty puppy that he will love for as long as you're willing to do so doesn't make him a bad guy because he's a consumer. I don't know if you've gotten that far in the book. Yes. But he's in the place of being a consumer. Consumers are not bad men. Consumers are simply men who are not ready, willing, or able to quote-unquote adopt, meaning commit. And they will not do it through love alone. We talked about the fact that can it change things? Yes, it can. It is a gamble, but it can. So in other words, going into it, you have to know the probabilities because of what he's told you, that he's in a state of being a consumer because of his career, his business, what have you. But it doesn't make it impossible. And, you know, I have the um, example in the book, and I'll liken it to what we just talked about here. If I took Sparky for the two weeks and I loved on him, and he's really wonderful, cute little doggy, and the neighbor and I, through years of going back and forth, I take Sparky whenever she's gone and um, she lets me take him on a weekend when I'm feeling particularly lonely or when my husband's out of town, whatever it is. And she comes to me and says, hey, 
no, I'm moving to an assisted living with my mother and have to take care of her, and they don't allow pets. Would you take Sparky? Okay, now I'm faced with, wow, I love this little guy. He's wonderful. Is this my puppy? Is this my chance? Will the love trump the other things in my life? Timing. Opportunity to have this love. It could. It absolutely could. I could put aside and say, you know what? I don't want to miss out on this little guy. He's only four years old now. He's fantastic. He's housebroken. He's quiet. He's wonderful. This could be my guy. You see? Mm-hmm. So it can happen. And it's what we do to allow that to come to its fullest potential by the feelings we create in the man. And that we do have control over. And when you like him and want and to and want to take this to the next level, it's your decision and choice, of course, to say, okay, I'm going to do this for the best possible chance. Okay. And it's absolutely possible. You have to go in, though, knowing I'm taking more of a chance here than if I were with more of a potential buyer. Right. And if he hadn't told me, if he said, you know, I'm at a place, you know, I'm going to be 45 next year, I really am, you know, I'm tired of dating, I'm ready to have more of a relationship, we would know that, okay, higher probability. <laughs> right. But it still doesn't make it impossible. It just means that with the lower probability, you have to be aware of that. Yes. You have to knowingly go into it, and then you have to kind of work the steps, so to speak, to have him moving up the scale towards being a bona fide buyer. Yes. So it sounds like that all resonates with you. Absolutely. It, it, it does. It does. And it did as I was reading the book. I could visualize conversations and scenarios um, that went right along with some of the um, passages in the book, for sure. Cool. So should you want to take the journey, you absolutely can. Knowledge is power. And going into it with a very, very clear mind that the love alone has a lower probability of taking him from being a consumer to a buyer. But it must be there. In other words, if I took Sparky and, you know, I liked him, I enjoyed him, but I really wasn't like in love with this doggy. When the neighbor came to me, it would be, yes, I'd be really considering it when she was going to move into the assisted living with her mother. But would it be super compelling to me? Probably not, right? Right. But again... And that's it, how... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. No, I was going to say, and, that, and that's how I felt, that even though the dynamic shifted, there's still the communication, most of the time not initiated by me. Mm. Um, and, you know, for example, today, I have not texted him, um, and I won't. At some point before the day is over, he will reach out to me, even if it's just, 
hey, how are you doing? The other interesting part in the communication, and I try very hard not to psychoanalyze things, so to speak. Mm -hmm. The interesting part of the communication is he does not talk a lot about himself. So I guess in normal getting to know you sort of conversations, we might talk about our work or our families and sometimes previous relationships. And he gives none of that away. And it's funny because we've joked about it. And every once in a while, we'll, I, I'll ask a, a question, and it would be an innocent question, but a question, and it, like you could visibly hear walls going up. And I'll say, okay, I, I see you and your barriers, and I respect that. So let me make a note to myself not to ask you personal questions or so personal of questions. And that's kind of an interesting dynamic in it. And as I was reading your book, it resonated with me that you, I'm sure all of us at some point or another in dating relationships, we've been ghosted. I certainly have ghosted people. And I think for the most, I feel for the most part, we're not going to continue daily communication if there's not some interest there. Um, you know, and, and for me, the part that, like I said, took me aback was the abrupt change in the way the communication went or changed. At the time, and I don't know if this was self-preservation on my part, when it abruptly changed, I was actually kind of hurt and kind of surprised. And I decided in my mind, as I saw after that, the communication still continued initiated by him. I wonder if he started to like me too much and whatever his barriers are, his walls, what have you, if that was a red flag to him to pull back. It certainly can be, but that is looking a bit too deep into it because mm -hmm. none of that, because his reasons really aren't going to be of help to you to know. Hmm. All you need to know is the behavior and yes. what you need to do to counteract that behavior. Because if you've read my book, you know, women relate via verbalization, men relate via action. Yes. So it's going to be what you do. And I'm hearing some things that would need to change in order for that to occur. And they are counterintuitive, meaning everything we believe we should do is normally not the answer. And that's what I work with in my program called GPS, the Groom Positioning System. Mm -hmm. Because okay. it is what we do, not what we say, and what we do to lead the man to make the right turns so that he feels what he needs to feel to have the best chance of wanting to commit, being ready to commit, and knowing that he is not going to allow his pretty puppy to potentially be adopted by someone else. I... Definitely, um, I, I definitely agree with that. And I think that that's something I struggle with. And I'm sure that, you know, other women in the same position struggle with. We get so used to how we behave and how we react. Um, undoing and unlearning those things, I think, is the hardest part. Like, logically... I know I should or shouldn't be doing X, Y, Z, but 
it's such a habit to be a certain way or do certain things that it, it can be very hard to, um, you know, hard to break that. And so that's, that's my thought process, like having that resolve um, to follow the rules, so to speak. And I love that. I mean, it's very, very true. We all get into habitual ways of being. What I find that women do that hurts them the most is they act on their emotion. Yes. I'm they definitely sh- guilty of that. Mm-hmm. They speak on their, um, on their emotion and they act on their emotion. And we can do so much to move a man up the scale by not doing what we would like to do, keeping ourselves from doing by the knowledge of the right thing to do and then sticking to it regardless of our feelings. That's super hard for women because we relate via our emotions. Men relate yes. via their decisions. And part of the process that we go through with, like, for example, the GPS system, is that you must set the GPS for where you want the man to go. And then it's really his journey you need to be the one of directing towards right and left. He's either going to take those rights and lefts as you direct it, or he's not. But it is the knowledge that, well, I'm being intentional about this because I don't want to be heartbroken and live under the guise of, if he loves me, he will, X meaning commit. No, that is one of the five criteria that must be there for him to make the decision to commit. Just like, this is why the puppy principle is so profound, it's not just that you love the puppy, because you can love many. It's that you have the right environment you know you are going to be responsible to it as much as for it. Meaning you know that you are going to make the sacrifices you need to make to give that puppy time, attention, affection. And then your finances are in the right place to have a puppy in the lifestyle you desire that puppy to be in. So, for example, if you would want your puppy to have the best of collars and leashes and beds and food and all of that, that's one lifestyle and have all the money necessary in case it needs a lot of vet uh, interaction and bills to be taken care of. That's one lifestyle on one end of the scale. On the other end of the scale, it's just, well, I've got a little wooden doggy house out in the back and a fenced in yard and he can run around and whatever food I can get on sale, he can have and he's just there and I've given him a home. That's another lifestyle. Neither is right or wrong, it's just what that man is going to be comfortable with. So if he fancies himself with the high-end car and taking you to the best places and giving you a certain lifestyle, no manner of you saying, but I'm okay without that, we'll do it. And this is for every woman. He wants that. In other words, when we take the puppy in, we know where we are in that lifestyle that we want to provide it and we are not going to be happy with the other because if our feeling is we want 
the you know the Gucci collar and uh, the bed that costs a fortune and the best food possible and the best vet care possible, we are not going to be comfortable with the quote-unquote junkyard doggy out in the back and leaving him outside. We're just not. It's not going to feel good to us. We can't look out our window and there he or she is on the cold floor, even though she may be absolutely fine with it. The doggy should be absolutely be fine with that, right? Mm-hmm. We wouldn't be. And this is what we have to know about the man. So, in your situation, and I'm sure you have questions, and I want to get to those, so let's do that in a moment. Looking for commitment from the man you love? Take the consumer versus buyer relationship test so you can discover if your man is ready, willing, and able to commit. Go to willhecommit.com. It's fast, free, and you'll get immediate results. All right, so back with Nicole, who is about a month in with Spencer. And after all of our discussion, what is coming to your mind, Nicole, and what questions do you have for me? Um, the correlation with the book and everything you've talked about really does resonate. And I think, as I stated previously, it, it's difficult to have that resolve to follow the necessary steps to change the course. Um, I, as I stated, my common sense says, you know where to find me. If, if you're thinking about me or you um, want to talk to me, then you're going to text me. Um, and that's what our relationship, and I use the term loosely because, of course, it's not a committed relationship at this point, but this getting to know you process, it has shifted from phone calls, FaceTimes to just texting. We still, you know, see each other every, you know, 10 days, you know, every couple of weeks. We'll hang out for a little bit. Um, So even though I typically do not initiate the communication, I do respond too quickly. If I see a text, I will respond. And it's never some big long response. It's usually something short. But I will engage and respond. And that's something I find so difficult to break that habit. And being able to look at the text and go, hmm, there's a text, and focus on something else and maybe reply later. Okay. So what's, what's the question? How, how does one shift that way of thinking? Again, falling into uh, our habits. What's the best approach to shift that thinking that we have to respond? You know, I think that the fear is, I know this is for myself and I've heard my friends, some of my friends say it as well. The fear is if we don't respond, then the person thinks that we're not interested and that may harm chances. Yes. That, you put it so clearly. And it's one of the number one problems for us as women to deal with and issues to tweak, reframe, deal with in a different manner. Because when we do things the same, we get the same results. Yes. And it's very 
uh, oxymoronic to us that focusing away from the man and not giving him attention is actually what it is that makes him want it. Does that make sense? It absolutely does. And then I think the, the, you know, the other part to that is, of, of course, we as women, and I, you know, we, we hear this all the time that, um, again, because we react or process more, you know, based on emotion. So how do we, at, at what point, you say, hey, this really isn't for me, and this isn't, it, it's not going to change, it's not going to go anywhere, and mm-hmm. like, how, how does one decide, okay, time's up on this, let's, mm-hmm. let's walk away. That. Yeah, I love that. It's why I have my GPS program is 12 weeks, because in three months' time, you can usually, that's a really good sweet spot of time to do this and for the man to come forward and show what he is willing, capable, able, uh, ready, and willing to do. Anything shorter, it leaves the woman saying, "Mm, did I really give it enough of a shot? Anything longer, and I believe in some senses, you're wasting your time. Because a man is going to be most interested in you prior to you getting together sexually. In other words, that's his driver, so to speak. His main innate reptilian driver is to conquer you. That means have sex with you. Mm -hmm. And his interest is going to be the most peaked prior to that. That's just an unfortunate reality for women. Because ours gets deeper the farther in that we go. The farther along that we are. The more we spend time and have sex, it generally speaking, if we have interest in the man, it gets deeper. You, if you've read the book, you know I liken that to a woman's love is like an ocean. A man's love is like a lake. And his is very peaked before he, when he sees it, what he wants, he goes and cannonballs in. It's why women say he was so in the beginning, so into it, I felt it coming at me in a very intense way, the interest. He doesn't even know who I am. He knows nothing about me, but he's so interested. Yep. And that's the time we need to capitalize. For you, in your situation, Nicole, you will have to really change things around here. What's the best approach to that? Because here's what will happen, I can almost guarantee it, if you don't change anything. You've already felt the change in his approach and interest. And in terms of that, there was no change on your part. It's it's, think of it as energy. He changed, you didn't. That isn't a, a mechanism to compel him for more. It's not. I'm hearing many things that would need to be tweaked here. The first and foremost, you said, I typically don't reach out. While that's good, It's not enough here. Because what you're doing is you're giving him intermittent reinforcement of his behavior. 
Now, you may say, well, it's not going to feel right if I just don't answer or uh, I don't ever reach out. That wouldn't feel right. Might you say that? I don't know. Absolutely, yes. Okay. But there has to be a one-time statement here. And it's about showing your value and about being a worthy opponent. Because this isn't a game, but as an analogy, it's a very important concept. Because men, in whatever they do, I don't care what it is, vocation, advocation, interests, anything, women, even sometimes their children. It's why a man, his son's got to achieve this, that, and the other thing. Everything is about the three C's. Challenge, competition, conquering. And a man wants to approach everything in his life at his A game. And when a woman doesn't do that with him, it's not very fulfilling for him. You know, play, but it's like, okay, not really that into it. You see? Yes, like it loses the the excitement. That's right. That's right. And what I'm hearing is that there is you've created no challenge. I think that is um, certainly correct. Okay, so you will need to change that up. And he's he's showing you a number of things. He's told you one he's not interested in a relationship, and then he shows it to you as well. You know how he's showing it to you? Oh. He's not belying anything about himself. That's putting up the barrier. Uh uh-uh. uh. You're not going to get me into a relationship. Yes. And you may be thinking, well, then why the heck does he even call at all? Why does he spend time at all? I do think that. Okay. <laughs> and wonder. Yes. Here's what that is very simple saying to remember. Men amuse themselves and self-soothe with women. Hmm. I'll say that again. Men amuse themselves and self-soothe with women. It is tantamount to you don't have anyone to talk to or see or call or what have you. And you go on Instagram, Facebook, whatever social media... And you go into your reels to see the cute puppy videos. Feels good. Mm -hmm. Watching each one do a cute thing. Kittens, maybe. Whatever. Maybe it's babies. But in some way, you are amusing yourself for that time and self-soothing. It feels good. It gives you that feeling. Men do this with real live women, and we must know it. And that's what he's doing. He's amusing himself and self-soothing. He likes you. You're a pretty puppy. You give him that feeling when you text, when you talk, when you FaceTime, when you give him your time, attention, and affection. And that comes in all manner of ways. But it isn't compelling to him in the way that it needs to be because you are allowing it. It's oxymoronic. Like, well, then what the heck, right? It doesn't make any sense. You don't want to do anything with me. You don't want to adopt. Leave me alone. No. We don't do that with puppies. We can't help ourselves. When we see one, We want to go grab it. We want to be watching videos. We want to be petting them when we see them. We can't walk by a a pet shop, right? Right. 
compelling, wonderful. They do that with us and we must be aware of it and be the worthy opponent that says, mm, I know how you play this game, so to speak, and I'm going to play it at your level. So initially, and this is for women who are finding themselves, and I love that you did this today, Nicole, because so many women are where you are with this. I mean, countless hundreds of thousands. <laughs> <laughs> Is yes, absolutely. Because this is the male female condition. It's who we are as the apples and oranges that we are. Doesn't mean we're not of complete equal value as apples and oranges are. Completely equal value fruit, but completely different. Can't grow apples as we grow oranges. They Very are night true. and day. <laughs> Yin and yang. Sun and rain. And this is while we're completely of equal value to men. We are completely different. And we have to pay deference to that difference because men want us to. Just as we generally don't like very girly men. Right. He doesn't want us to be a manly woman. What I mean by that is energy, male energy. Yes. The world is male energy. The world around us in every way, shape, and form is male energy, especially in the Western world where we must be competing for everything, for resources, for everything in our lives, right? And if we are a single woman, we are out there doing it. And if we don't have male energy in it, we're eaten up. So we tend to be male energy, but in terms of men, then we have to switch hats. It's very difficult. It's much easier for men because they just stay the same. Male energy, male energy, male energy. And we like that. As women. Right. We have to change it up. In, But it doesn't mean that we aren't a worthy opponent. What I mean by that is showing our value. That, oh, I'm seeing how you like to roll. And I'm going to do that in my female equal but opposite way. And for you, it's going to necessitate changing things around. And the reason why the 12 weeks work so well for women in my program is because we see how the man reacts to it each week. And then you get to tell me. Because it's all well and good to say, okay, here's where you start. And for example, for you, it would be starting in this way. It would be when he reaches out again, it would be one text. And it would be, you know, Spencer, I really enjoyed, you know, um, you know, meeting you and, uh, you know, the few dates that we've had or whatever. I, I really enjoyed it and I appreciate you. I think you're a great guy. However, I don't feel that we're in the same place in our lives of wanting something similar. So I really wish you all the best in your search. That's it. That is tantamount to, I get you. I see what you're doing. I don't waste my time playing in the minor leagues. I want to play in the major leagues. And I want to find somebody who's ready to play in the major leagues. No harm, no foul. You're a great guy. This is not about you. I understand consumers. Because here's the real deal. As much as I love puppies, am I a bad person for going up to them and, and loving them when I see them on the street or taking my uh, neighbor's sparky and, and 
giving him love and loving on him for two weeks. But I'm not willing to adopt my own. Does that make me bad? Not at all. Not at all. He's not bad. And he actually told you right from the get-go. He never hit it. And continually he's sung the same song. Meaning, I'm not ready for a relationship. And then when you start to go there with it, meaning, know more about him, what does he do? He closes off. That's singing the same song. Not relationship song. Not relationship song. Not relationship song. Does it mean he's not going to amuse himself and self-soothe with a pretty puppy? who will touch base with him every day, who will make him feel somewhat connected to female energy and to the world in terms of more than just male energy work? He will. And he will consume as much and for however long as it suits his purposes and you allow him to do so. So you send that one text. What do you think if you sent that text, you'll get back? I, I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know. Okay. Um, and, I, and I think that falls to him having walls, so not having the opportunity to kind of get to know that side of him. So I don't know. Mm-hmm. However... Like you said, no harm, no foul. It certainly cannot make things worse. Certainly can't make, make things what? Worse. Uh-huh. Yeah. No. Because you were saying, and you can even, I love that phrase I use a lot, no harm, no foul. In other words, you're saying, I'm taking responsibility for my life I'm not going to make you a bad person because you're not ready to adopt. Not at all. I just know I'm ready to be adopted. And even though you said, and this is where many of us uh, hurt ourselves, is we're saying, you know, I don't even know if I want to be married. That's a big one. I've been on my Mm -hmm. own for many years. I don't even necessarily want to be married. Here's the translation of that. I haven't met the guy that I would really want to make a fully committed life with. Haven't met him. And don't know what a relationship whereby he's really all in not messed up, completely committed, really wonderful. I haven't had that, or I haven't had it in so long. I don't even know what it feels like anymore, and so I'm afraid of the unknown. Additionally, I'm not going to set myself up for possible hurt, mishkas, problems, issues, unknown. Is truly fear of either repeating past or not making the unknown future what I don't even know it could be. Right. What it is, the reason I say GPS, the groom positioning system, because if you don't set your GPS, for yourself and that potential partner along for the ride, you're never going to get anywhere. Because if we get in the car and just drive without setting the GPS and then following it, we are doing ourselves harm and we're never going to get there. We're just going to keep driving around and getting lost. Because we... That makes sense. We are the mechanics of men. We are the mechanics of relationships. We know what it takes for a relationship 
car to run. We know them, we understand them, we talk about them, we spend our time and resources on them, we spend a lot of our internal lives about relationships because we are love and connection in the world. Think about if there were no female energy in the world. Wow. What a place. Mm-hmm. Right? Be very dominant. Boy, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, right? So, the, it necessitates that we direct it. Just like when we have a real car, we take it to a mechanic who understands it, knows it, loves it, spends his time, usually male, getting to know the inner workings, and he understands it. And we just want it to look good, feel good, get in it, it runs, and we know it's going to go the distance. That's what the man wants with us and relationships with us. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to understand it. I don't need to. I just want it to be good, look good, get in it. I put some gas in it sometimes, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. That's it. It necessitates. So we don't know what he would say specifically. And that's where we do the work. Because it depends what he comes back with. And we go from there. And we go step by step, setting the GPS for the possibility. Because you don't really know, for example, not saying, this is the man I want to marry, correct? Correct. Okay, but you have to set it to this. Your GPS is, I want a completely committed monogamous, exclusive relationship with a wonderful man to whom I'm going to be the world, meaning the sun rises and sets with me. Yes. That's your GPS. That's every woman's GPS. And with every man that gets in the car with her, that's where we're headed. If not, I'm going to let you out at the 11th mile. Anytime you show me, you're not willing to, to take the turn when the GPS says turn right, turn left. You're not willing to do that. Well, then i got to let you out because then I'm not following, and then I'm just driving in circles. You're not bad because you don't want to go on the same journey. Not at all. But then get out so I can find someone who's willing to see my value and take that journey with me. And he may absolutely see your value. Absolutely. And it's why he's been connected to you in the way that he has. He does. But he is self-soothing and amusing with you. And he's showing you that by the pulling back and when, you know, you're, you're, you're typically not um, sending out to him, that's not good enough. That's not enough. And you're continuing to interact with him on his terms will get you what? It will get you his terms. Right. Mm-hmm. So what are the questions now that all of that has been said? You know, I I think that I think that the next questions would be is the um, the next steps from you know sending that text, but and you know clearly it's dependent upon what the response is. And that, of course, we don't know until that text has been sent. Right. Mm-hmm. Because it will, um, and, and it's, it's generally, and I always say this, you want to think about it in this way. It's going to be, it takes cojones on your part 
to do it, right? Yes. First of all. Because it goes against everything in our being. Our three C's are we are the cooperators, connectors, and caretakers. That feels almost punitive in a way. And it's also, you don't want it to end. Exactly. That's exactly it. Yeah. It's antithetical in your feelings of what it is that you want. But it is imperative to move him towards any real possibility of anything other than being used for amusement and self-soothing. Yes. And because a man wants a worthy opponent to spend his time playing the game of romantic life. Because it doesn't feel good when he just can play the game however he wants. It doesn't feel good to him. He wants to be challenged. This is what is vital for every woman to understand with their man and make a conscious choice to do. Without it, you just keep getting more of the same until eventually he does get tired of it because it's not compelling, it's not challenging, it's not interesting. Now, again, if he thinks, oh, well, there's a possibility of getting some sex and then ghosting, then you don't want that. Right. And again, I'm not making him a bad guy. And they don't generally think, oh, that's what I'm going to do. They're not thinking Mm -hmm. about it in that way. It's not usually that calculated. While there are men who do calculate in that way, I would say the vast majority do not. The vast majority are decent. It's the 5% that we have to be wary of, and that's Mm. in all our society. 5% of people are the ones committing all the crimes and doing all the damage. The other 95% are great. Right. It's the same with men. 95% are good and have good intentions. He's not setting out to hurt you. He's not setting out to... He hasn't pushed you for sex, correct? Correct. Yeah. He's being respectful. He absolutely is. Mm -hmm. So he's worthy of seeing because you like him, because you have interest and desire, and you're a seven on the scale... It's worth it for you to take the journey. Because if you take the journey, and this is what I tell women who work with me in a program like GPS or lure him in, lure him back, is that when you do it through time, you come to really know so much and Ever the outcome, whether you get exactly what it is that you set out to achieve, fantastic, or you see he's not in any way capable and love will not trumpet for him, you have learned all the steps and all you need to know going into romantic life beyond him if that occurs. Yes. So I thank you so much for doing this today because it is really a great example of an online experience and getting to meeting someone and liking them and all that can come up with it. I really appreciate it because I think you've helped a lot of but women in listening to this. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think now more than ever with, you know, with all of these barriers in place where we would normally um, meet people, right? Or 
even just filling our time with friends and family and things like that, we don't, we don't have that anymore. And I would imagine that a, a lot of people are turning to online dating probably now more than ever. I think that's really, really true. And I often say this because it's the only good option now. For dating. Right. Yeah. I mean, with the lockdowns the way that it is, and we need people, and we need the the possibility of having someone in our lives. Yes. And this time, if you're hearing this when we're actually, you know, um, recording it and, you know, podcasts are forever, so they can be out there for years to come, but in the last quarter of 2020, towards the holidays, and going into January and February of 2021, New Year's Day is the busiest day of the year for online dating. More people go on a dating website app, what have you, than at any other time of the year. And between New Year's and February 14th, Valentine's Day, it is the busiest time of the year. It is where in 2021 with these lockdowns, it is the place to be. It's about doing it in the way that will show the man your value and help you not waste your valuable time in terms of, and I don't mean you specifically, uh, Nicole. I mean, it would be wonderful, and let's hope we can work to bring Spencer up the scale to where he yes. is capable of being. But for everyone else who is dating during this time, it is the time to be online heading into 2021. So it, and it's why I'm offering my program for people at a very, for women, a very serious discount because it is hard times for everyone and we need the possibility of the hope to really have something because the world is a changed place and it's not going to go back. And we really need that connection and committed relationships now, I believe, more than ever. Certainly in our modern day, more than ever. And so it's, it's why I'm all about that right now. But again, I thank you, Nicole, for, for doing this and for helping other women through doing it. And um, let's continue our discussion offline here. Uh, but I will say goodbye to you now. And thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that was really informative, I think, for so many women who are dealing with a nice consumer, someone who's respectful and showing interest, but whereby you know he is not moving up the scale and actually in Nicole's case actually not only not moving up the scale but kind of sliding back and that's when we have to take some decisive action for ourselves and for the possibility of him coming around should the feelings be enough the action that I had suggested Nicole take is actually the action to not only disengage yourself, but to have the shot at moving him up the scale towards being a prospective buyer. So I hope, again, this has been informative. And if you are online dating, I really want you to be able to do it in a way that is 
a supportive guiding way to the best possible approaches to get the best results. It's how you set up your picks and profile. It's the all-important third step of him introducing himself to you and having to achieve your yes to meeting and not just in text or a simple yes. The absolute wording you need that is fun and even a bit flirty but directs him towards that in a feminine way, huge. That third step alone, a game changer in the trajectory of any relationship with a man that you meet and then you decide you like and how you move him from meeting to dating, dating, and how it needs to go, and getting the support in what you heard uh, similar today of, okay, this man, while you said there's no red flags, we heard that there was. And that takes, you know, just some objectivity And that is also what I provide in a guided way to help you really know what it is that not only you're dealing with, but the approach necessary to move it in the direction you would like it. For more of my videos, my quotes that you can keep in your mind and remember to help you on Instagram, Coach Paula Grooms. On YouTube, Coach Paula Grooms. Subscribe, hit that red alert bell so you get all my videos when they come out. And remember, for any man in your life, the most important thing is about making him wonder. Thank you for listening to Make Him Wonder. If you've benefited from today's conversation, please subscribe and share. Connect with Coach Paula at MakeHimWonder.com. There you can take several relationship evaluations, discover her books and other resources, and find out if one of her personalized coaching programs might be right for you.